Hi, we're going to talk about syllables today as understanding and practicing syllables will significantly improve your English pronunciation. So without delay, come this way. So why are syllables so important? Because they play a crucial role in pronunciation, stress patterns, spelling, reading, word formation and fluency. Whew. So what is a syllable? Well, a syllable is one unit of sound, usually including a vowel sound and often accompanied by consonants. A syllable is the joining of these consonants and vowel sounds together into one sound. In English, every word has at least one syllable and some words have multiple syllables. Take a look at these words. Come, go, back, round. Each one has only one syllable. Why? Because each of these words has only one vowel sound. Notice I said the word sound. Listen and repeat out loud. Come, go, back, round. So now let's look at this word. About. How many syllables are there in this word? Yes, two. Now listen. About. A is a, bout is bout. Which syllable is stressed? When I say stressed, I mean a change in pitch and volume in my voice and vowel length. Listen. A, bout, a, bout. Copy me and say it out loud. About. About. Did you notice that I pronounced the A as the schwa sound, a? Uh? Listen again. About. Not. A. Bout. The schwa in this word is the unstressed syllable. It's just one letter here, but it still counts as one syllable. It is these weak syllables that give English its rhythm and intonation. That's because unstressed words and syllables are usually said faster and at a lower volume than stressed words or syllables. As a result, the foul sound in an unstressed word or syllable can lose its full sound. A uh represents most weak vowel sounds and it's a bit like the sound you make when you're punched in the stomach. Uh. So when the schwa replaces a vowel sound, we don't hear the expected long e or long a sound. It's shorter, quicker and quieter. It's the most common sound in the English language. Now let's practice saying these two syllable words out loud with strong and weak syllables. Easter. Here, the ER sound is a schwa. We do not pronounce ER as ER. Uh. We say uh. That's one of the biggest differences between British and American English. It's the same for all words ending in ER, like mother, sister, brother, after. Moving on. The word holy. Here's an example when there are two syllables, but no schwa. The ho is ho, not ho, and the li is pronounced l and the short vowel sound i, li, 
holy. So the li is the unstressed syllable. Now for some three syllable words. Celebrate. Celebrate. Count the syllables. Celebrate. Now, where is the schwa sound? Well, it's on the second syllable. Celebrate. Okay, so where's the stressed syllable? You know it can't be the second syllable because that's the weak schwa sound. Is it the first or the third? Listen again. Celebrate. Celebrate. Yes, it's the first. If you got it wrong, go back and listen again. Listening to English is the key to good pronunciation. In fact, I've written some stories you might enjoy listening to. They're great for getting rhythm and intonation just right. So just go here. Ah, 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 not now. Wait until after the lesson. Now try this word. Saturday. Count the syllables with me. Saturday. Where's the schwa? Saturday. Yes, you got it. It's the second. Here, the schwa is replacing the er sound when it's spelt with U-R. Now say these words with me out loud. But I want you to listen for which syllable is stressed. English. English. The first syllable. It's fairly equally balanced, but with stronger stress on the first part. If I say it wrong, you hear English. OK, next word. Member. That was easy. And that's the first syllable is stressed. Collection. Collection. Yes, the second syllable is stressed. Oh, by the way, every word with a T-I-O-N or S-I-O-N ending will be weak next word. Conversion. Ah, that was a trick one. There are two weak syllables in this word. Con and jeune. Conversion. Hear it? Good. Next one. Parent. Yes, the first syllable. Cultural. Where's the stress? The first syllable. The AL spelling at the end of a word will always be weak and sound like this. L. L. Cultural. Well done. So now I really hope you can see how important it is to mark the main stressed syllable in every word you learn from now on. It will really help your pronunciation, rhythm and stress. Remember, syllables play a crucial role in determining the stress patterns of English words. Typically, one syllable in a word is more stressed or emphasised than the others. Knowing the correct syllable to stress is vital for clear and natural sounding speech. Listen to these words. See if you can understand them when I get the stress wrong. Fantastic. Necessary. Understand. Well, just in case you got confused, they are fantastic, necessary and understand. Here are three general rules to help you with word stress. Number one, two syllable nouns and adjectives. The stress is on the first syllable as in apple, table, happy. Number two, words which can be used as both nouns and verbs. The noun has stress on the first syllable. 
You are the suspect. The verb has stress on the second syllable. I suspect you. Number three, compound nouns. The stress is fairly equally balanced, but with stronger stress on the first part. Hairbrush. Football. Let's now have a look at word formation. Recognising syllable patterns can help you to understand how words are formed, especially when it comes to compound words, prefixes and suffixes. This can expand your vocabulary and help you understand the meaning of new words. A prefix is a group of letters placed before the root of a word. For example, the word unhappy. This consists of the prefix un, which means not, combined with the root or stem, happy. The word unhappy means not happy. Prefixes can give the word meaning, like the word or the prefix sub, meaning under, re, meaning again, pre, meaning before, post, meaning after. Look at this word, submarine, or replace. Usually the stress of the root word stays the same and the prefix is unstressed. A suffix is a group of letters placed after the root of a word and again the stress of the root word stays the same and the suffix is unstressed. For example, replacement with munt as the suffix, which tells us it's a noun. Being aware of syllables and their patterns can help you develop better rhythm and pacing in your speech, which contributes to greater overall fluency in English. See my video on stress and rhythm here. So, as you can see, syllables are essential for you as an English learner as they play a crucial role in pronunciation, stress patterns, spelling, reading, word formation and fluency. Working on syllables and word stress can be fun and over time will help you to be better understood and a more confident speaker. Oh, and don't forget to take a look at those videos I recommended earlier. Until next time, love and peace.